So the rumor mill has been kind of quiet, actually, leading into E3, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons it's felt kind of down when it comes to E3 hype. I think a lot of people have noticed this, and it's been kind of, eh, okay, what do we have for E3 this year? Of course, you know, Sony's not there, so that's one of the big three that's uh, just not going to be there, and that, of course, has probably uh, deflated some of the hype for some people, but we still have Nintendo, Microsoft, and seemingly it seems Square taking uh, taking Sony's place, and they uh, probably have some stuff to show, but the fact that we're kind of deflated on one entire, you know, company just not being there is is an issue, but but it seems like rumors are, are starting up, which isn't surprising to me because we're less than two weeks out now from E3. I mean, in two weeks, we'll have already seen Microsoft's entire presentation will have seen Jedi Fallen Order from EA and any other games they want to bring. And we'll already be talking about right now, you know, going into Nintendo's, Squares, and a few others. So uh, it's going to be exciting in a couple weeks. But some rumors are starting to show up. And we could have had potentially a very big surprise uh, spoiled for us to a degree. Now, we saw this pop up uh, at the beginning of the year. You might remember this. A, a retailer listed The Witcher 3 for the Switch. Now, I have not heard anything about a Witcher 3 showing up on the Switch, but that wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people haven't heard about it, as CD Projekt Red is generally pretty good at keeping some of their stuff quiet, right? Uh, Cyberpunk, for example, went dark for the longest time, and we really didn't hear much about it. So, I'm not overly surprised to to be uh to not really see anything about the witcher 3 but this was actually put up uh and people noticed and it's kind of blown up since then uh today and that is from two handle game app and the latest rumor seems to put the witcher 3 the wild hunt game of the year in september for the Switch. And there are a lot of questions about this. I mean, just an obscene amount of questions about this. One, has Walmart Canada said anything about this? I checked. No. I double-checked with their customer service. Nothing. So, you know, not not super inclined to believe this. But uh, it's, it's an interesting situation for a couple reasons. One, a lot of people are thinking, can it actually run on the Switch? I actually don't think it running on the Switch is the biggest issue because we've seen resolution and frame rate, a lot of sacrifices made for some games to come over, right? Doom surprised a lot of people. Wolfenstein 2 surprised a lot of people. But this is like a more of an open world style game that didn't appear on the 360 or PS3. The Witcher 2 did, but not The Witcher 3. And then, of course, we have space constraints, uh, things that the PS4 and the Xbox One don't necessarily need to deal with because they can download massive, you know, amounts. And Blu-rays that hold up to 50 gigabytes aren't very expensive compared to game cartridges that, like, a 64 car gigabyte cartridge is fairly expensive. Same with 32 gigabyte cartridges. So, it's interesting to hear about The Witcher 3. Now, they could, of course, make people download, you know, a good chunk of the game. That's not, like, out, out of, like, out of question there. But the other interesting thing about this is it's it would be the first time I that I could think of CD Projekt Red and Nintendo working together on a game because I believe that if this is real, one it would have been a big surprise that would have been uh, that would have been kind of ruined, right? I think if Witcher Three just popped up in Nintendo's Direct, people would have like really been what. Wow, really? Which are they? It would have been that moment kind of with Hellblade. Do you remember how we saw Hellblade and a lot of us kind of went, really? They're doing Hellblade? Wow. Uh, same with Doom and Wolfenstein too. Those were some surprising ones. Um, that would have caught some people off guard, I would say, uh, it, which is interesting there. And then too, of course, how does it how does it look? How does it play? And, and everything. Uh, but what's interesting is after this kind of popped up, people started searching around for it because a lot of forums, of course, discussion boards are now talking about the possibility of The Witcher 3 showing up on the Switch. And a lot of people are still having a hard time believing it. And I, I can understand, like I said, that's a game that has a hard time running on like the Xbox One, for example, or the PlayStation 4. But People were searching, for example, uh, recent era game FAQs or game facts Reddit, and people have started to find that it's actually listed up on uh, what is that? How do you pronounce? Is it Tal Talbo? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it's it's basically it's a shopping site uh, under Alibaba, and a lot of places right now retailers are listing it currently. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it's actually a thing, but it's interesting that these started popping up recently. 
on these sites where they don't really have to care about embargoes or anything. And honestly, if it's going to be announced in a couple of weeks, they might just not care. They might just say, hey, we'll get some orders for this thing. Just, just go ahead and throw it up there. They also have, apparently, stickers for the Switch, which is interesting that they would do that. But, I mean, there are some big Witcher fans out there, so even if it's not on the Switch, they might want to decorate their system, their dock, and everything. Now, fitting it on a cartridge is going to be the interesting thing, if they go that route and could fit the entire thing on there. Because I think Nintendo would probably would probably publish it alongside CD Projekt Red, right, in some way, kind of go to them and, and make that deal happen. Maybe they subsidize the cartridges, which is something that people have been asking for, right? They've been saying, hey, you know, maybe if Nintendo would show up and say, hey, we'll help you get this on there, don't necessarily worry as much about the cartridge costs, worry about getting it running on the Switch. I, I think that would get more companies on board, as the cartridges are becoming cheaper, but they're not to that point yet, right? Uh, I, I am curious how it's going to run. Is it going to be 720p 30 with drops and everything? Possible, yes. Uh, and then, of course, handheld mode. Seeing The Witcher 3 as a handheld game, I think, would shock a lot of people. But I'm still on the uh, side of, we'll see, you know, because it still seems a bit crazy. Uh, when it comes to all of the things that would have to fall into place for it. But it's not the first time we've heard about it, so it does kind of keep popping up leading into E3. And hey, we don't have to wait much longer, about two weeks to see what happens there. Now, the other rumor that's also very interesting, because it has to do with the company that's not there, and that's Sony. Now, <laughs> uh, if, you've been, if you've been following along the channel, I have said that uh, I think there is uh, right now a, a, an idea as to when the last three big Sony games are coming out. I think they're all going to release over the next uh, 16 months or so leading up to the PS5. I think all of the games are going to be out before the PlayStation 5 launches at the end of 2020. Uh, I, I don't think that should surprise anyone because these are all confirmed to still be PS4 games. And of course, the PlayStation 5 is going to be backwards compatible. They've already told us that. Mark Cerny has said it. Uh, they've talked about it in their investors meeting. Yes, the PS5 will be able to play all these games straight away anyway. And there'll probably even be a patch to make them look or even run better. Now, The Last of Us 2 apparently has a release date already set up for this year. And from what the... It's, it's interesting. There are rumors now going around that this week is when we'll hear about it. Now, we've already heard that this week we'll hear about Death Stranding news, and I hope that's a release date, but most likely, and this is from a, uh, a Spanish site that is actually reporting this as a rumor, of course, and the way that I think this could work, let me lay out my thoughts on release schedule here. So, Last of Us Part Two, I do think, is a holiday 2019 game. Okay, that's my personal opinion. I don't have any uh, information on it necessarily, but I think Last of Us 2 is coming out holiday of this year, and then I think Death Stranding is going to be a spring, think of like where Days Gone came out, right, or God of War, it's going to be like an April release, I think, and then we'll see Ghost of Tsushima come out before the PS5, maybe a month or so before the PS5 even, which I think the PS5 will probably stick status quo coming out like first week or two in November. So that's kind of where I think that's that's going to happen. What's interesting is it sounds like Sony is going to do some announcements just before E3. We've already heard that Death Stranding is going to have information, and I wouldn't be surprised if Last of Us 2 is also getting information uh, this week, just before June, right? Because at the end of this week, so Friday is the last day of May, they would want to put that information out, get it all out there before E3. Remember, they said they won't be active during E3, and I, I kind of believe them on that. And I think they would want to get this information out there before everything starts happening. And I know Last of Us 2 is big, and I know Death Stranding is big, but they would have way more of a spotlight put on them if they have announcements now rather than two weeks from now at E3. I think it just makes complete sense. Like, Sony not going to E3, if you really step back and look at it, will actually probably benefit them because they can put their announcements out whenever they want, which... Yes, means they could put it out a week and a half before everyone else gets to announce their stuff and then just kind of skip the very expensive E3 show. Now, I do think, of course, Microsoft and Nintendo and Square are still going to have some bigger announcements, but you got to admit, you know, Sony doing this kind of by themselves, it, it's kind of smart when it comes to that. But I'm excited to hear about Last of Us 2 if it does indeed get revealed this week. We at least know at this point 
that Death Stranding is getting something. I'd like to understand that game. I really would. Uh, but at this point, they're just going to have to put it out there and release it, you know, with a release date and everything for us to uh, to find out more about it at this point. Because I don't think Kojima is really going to tell us everything we need to know about the game un until it just comes out and we find out for ourselves. But my release schedule, I think, is Last of Us 2, then Death Stranding, then Ghost of Tsushima, then the PS5, and then we roll into that generation with PS4 games that just work on the PlayStation 5. You guys are going to let me know what you think about these rumors, whether it's The Witcher 3 on the Switch, which does still sound kind of crazy, but, I mean, we've seen some crazy stuff happen, so it's, it's definitely possible. And then Last of Us Part 2 getting a release date and actually coming out this year. I'm curious about both of those guys. Let me know uh, down below. If you missed Newswave, it is up from this morning, so go check that out. Uh, and then, uh, of course, I'll see you guys tomorrow morning when we talk about Pokemon and a bunch of other stuff that's happening. It feels like E3 now. It really does, and that's exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. Make sure you guys have a good moral day today. Go have some fun, and I'll see you guys next time.